Welcome back to another Spirit Island video. In this video, we're going to be covering my house rules. If you watched any of my previous videos, you'll notice that sometimes I will um, redraw a major power or redraw an event. And um, this is just to summarize why I make those changes and um, to kind of put that together for players that are newer to the channel. So with that said, let's get started. So the very first event that I throw back is Farmer Seek the Dahan for Aid. And this event gives the players um, a choice between two options. Option one says on each board, two damage to Dahan in a land with buildings and Dahan. On each board, add a blight to a land with at least two Dahan. And then buildings all have minus one health. So if you're picking top on farmers, it's going to kill a Dahan and add a blight. So two negative effects. Now, if you choose the bottom option, it says on each board, you then add a town to a land with Dahan, and then the next Ravage becomes a build. So both of these options are really painful and can outright lose you the game or win you the game against some adversaries. For an example, if I'm playing against France and I choose the top option here, this is going to add a Blight to land with two buildings, and a lot of times France is going to have lands that look like this, or just in general, you may have a land that has a town, uh, a town city explorer, and that land is ravaging this turn. And this might be the only land with two buildings. Well, farmers just adds an instant blight to that land, and then you're going to get a cascade when it ravages. So very punishing. On top of it killing a Dahan on the top option. Now let's say you're still playing France, and now you pick bottom option. Well, bottom map bottom option is going to add a town. So it's pushing you towards that town limit. And then let's say you're counterattacking like two towns with two Dahan and Ravage. Oh wait, now instead of them ravaging, it's going to build there. So you're not going to kill towns, basically adding three towns against France. This bottom part is um, basically you can't actually pick it against France. It's an, it's, um, it's an auto lose. So you're forced to pick the top option, which kills a Dahan. Then you combined with the new diseases on bottom which is automatically going to kill another Dahan. So if you're playing a Dahan spirit like Downpour or maybe Many Mines or um, Thunder Speaker, this event just kills two of your Dahan. And that's can be very frustrating and very unfair for those types of spirits, even like Green, Shroud. These are all spirits that utilize Dahan and um, it's essential for these spirits to function properly. And this event just basically, I don't want to say loses you the game, but puts you very far behind, and it doesn't really seem fair for the player. Now, let's look at um, Farmers versus Russia. So, now you have this op it's the same option on top where it kind of sucks, but now the bottom allows you to turn that first Ravage into a build. And that could be game saving if you have multiple lands on your board ravaging. Let's say, like, eight lands ravaging. Like, every land on your board is ravaging because. Um, it's just a complete mess. This will skip that first ravage that occurs uh, uh, in all of the lands. So, I mean, if, if you have multiple cards here, it'll only affect that first card. But um, you get the point. Like, that can stop several, several Blight against Habsburg. Um, you may have a ravage that's going to be a loss condition. Oh, wait. Just pick bottom. And now that ravage doesn't occur, and now you don't have a loss condition. Maybe you're playing against Sweden, where you, unfortunately, are going to be taking... For Blight, just because you had a really bad Explore. Maybe you're playing board B, and um, it's Jungle Explore, and you're, like I said, you're taking 4 to 5 Blight. Oh wait, picking bottom here just saves you. And I know I just picked a bunch of options where this helps you, but the point I'm trying to make is, the card can swing really hard in both directions, and there's no middle ground. Um, the Like I said, the bottom option, very painful into some adversaries, forcing you to pick top, and... Um, and then also the the opposite is true as well. The bottom can be so strong where there's no choice, and it can also just be game-winning. Um, there are some 6-6 six, six games that can be won only because this is like you would have to stack the deck, but if you put this at the top of the deck, um, allowing the players to get a full Ravage skip can be just busted and can win you the game into a 6-6. Six, six. So... I just decided to um, cut this game from, or cut this event from my games, and a lot of uh, my playgroup also decided that. And then um, I believe that's kind of caught the attention of the devs. At least I've 
I've talked to several of them about this card in the future, or um, I talked about this card, and um, they said that they might do something about it in the future. I'm not entirely sure. I'm just hoping that maybe more people can stop playing with it so that we can kind of push this card out of the game and get a rightful replacement. Um, I think, like, this this effect needs to be changed. This effect could be fine. I, I don't know. I, it honestly just needs a full rework. If your plan is to create this farmer seek the Dahan and you want to kill Dahan, um, leave this on bottom and then change the top somehow. Um, or you leave the top the same and then maybe make this like beast attack or something really cool um, to actually make this card not feel really bad. Because like I said, picking top, you lose two Dahan. Picking bottom can just outright lose you the game. Also, like picking bottom into England is just hilarious because like, you skip that Ravage, but then it's an extra build. So um, you stop the counterattacks as well as create more adjacency builds. It just kills players instantly. Okay, so moving on to the next event here. I spent a long time on Farmers. Let's look at another event. And we have Numinous Crisis. Another choice event where the players get to pick between removing one Blight per player from the Blight card. So if you have, let's say I have four Blight, we would remove one per player. And then we remove um, all of the rest of the Blight. And then we gain that much energy. So if I removed four Blight, I'm going to get 12 energy <laughs> if I pick top. Now if I pick bottom, I either have to lose energy, lose powers, or lose uh, lose presence. Or I, I guess returning the presence to the tracks. And ex and in exchange, we get, we're going to add Blight to the Blight pool. So you're adding Blight or you're gaining energy. Well, it turns out this top part is so busted. I mean, as you guys can see, 12 energy is nuts. And you might say, oh, wait, you're going blighted. Well, going blighted doesn't matter if I have 12 energy. Uh, 12 energy just completely trivializes any sort of um, puzzle that you may have with your spirit in terms of your build. If I'm playing Fangs, for instance, right? Fangs, the, the only negative to going bottom track is you're starved on energy, and you're very starved. Numinous Crisis flips, now that one negative doesn't exist. So it, you no longer have that choice to go top track. You should just always go bottom track. And there's a lot of other spirits that are like that. What are, what's another one? Like Vengeance, right? You just rush bottom track. Who needs the energy up top when you're going to get 12 energy from, from, the, um, uh, from the event? So I tend to skip this card just because it's so favorable for the players. Like picking top, like I said, is always better. I shouldn't say always, because there's always that one case where picking bottom is better. But top just creates such swinging games that and minimizes the um, the decision tree. And I'm all about making a ton of decisions. So whenever a card really removes a lot of those decisions, I tend to not like it. Um, so this is more positive for the players. Usually, farmer seek is more negative, but it also could be positive. Uh, depending on the matchup. Um, Numinous Crisis, it also adds some fear, kills to Hans. So this is like straight up negative here, but the Dahan defend is very strong. So losing this card removes the Dahan defend from the deck, which does hurt spirits that rely on this. Um, there is a percentage of it. I should one day create a video that talks about the different um, likelihoods of you hitting a Dahan de defend event, but I'm also not good at statistics. So maybe I'll have like Ray do that for me. <laughs> But um, you get the point. Okay. I'm now going to look at two major powers that I throw back. And the first one is Grant Hatred. This is one of the worst majors in the game. Um, you should never pick up this card. It is always a bad card. Always. Um, I say that now. Uh, I know there is a spirit coming in the new expansion um, that really likes this card. But we'll... <laughs> We'll see what happens once that expansion gets released and if I decide to let this card back into my games. Um, it's just terrible. It's four energy. It's a moon fire. Uh, it's a slow power, one range. For each strife or blight in target land, one fear, two damage. Then if you kill all the invaders, you get a beast. And then the threshold is just absurd. Uh, four, two, and then you get three extra strife. Um, it's just it's a very bad card. There's so many better cards than this. Um, and... The devs are, have already said that they um, would 
for sure. This is like one of the first cards that they would completely redo. Um, I really like the um, the moon fire. Like I love the two elemental combinations with a really easy to hit innate or uh, not innate uh, threshold. I think I find those to be very enjoyable. A good example of that would be like um, now I'm blanking. Uh, let's see, jungle hungers. There we go. Two element moon plant and it's a two three threshold i really like that um there is i mean there's plenty of them if you've seen my major power tier list you'll see a lot of those two element ones sea monsters is another really fun one but they can really be impactful cards um let's see is there any others their voice of command is another really good one unique effects stuff like that and like i have a um a redraft uh, not a redraft a rework of this card but I, I won't reveal that until um, in a couple months once we get all the Nature's Incarnate stuff out. So I always toss this card back. It's always not the pick. And the only worse card than Grant Hatred is Transform. And Transform is a six cost slow. It has five elements. Target Spirit may choose one of their sacred sites. In that land, each presence is removed with the Badlands. The, the presence leaves the game, so it's not even destroyed. You then gain that many um, Badlands, or you may push any number of Badlands. You then gain three fear, and then three damage per presence replaced. Um, it's... I don't know how else to explain it, but this card is just really, really bad for six energy. It's six energy slow. You lose all these presents. I mean, you get to do a ton of damage in that land, like if you, let's say the, the player has a sacred site, right? And you play this card on them, they get, uh, they lose the sacred site, they get two bad lands, and then they get to do, um, it'd be six damage plus the two bad lands, so it'd be eight damage and three fear in that one land. Um, like eight damage is not bad, it's just the six energy cost. Like if this was four energy, this would see... I, I would it would see some amount of play um but at six just none like this is just so bad <laughs> um the threshold is also just hilariously bad too it's a three two two you could do one damage into adjacent lands um now this one damage could be two damage if you push those bad lands out of the mainland but um then your your original damage number is gonna be less so um just really very underwhelming card. If you see me play any of my games, I will always toss these cards back. Um, who knows? I might make a change to Grand Hatred. Really, I'm hoping that the devs could um, come up with exploratory options for these cards so that I can kind of integrate those cards just like I did with Vengeance of the Dead. So if you guys like this video, like, subscribe for more content. I'll see you guys in the next video.